Okay, now I'm here. I'm actually here. Water reached 100 degrees Celsius? Indeed. No, actually it didn't. It only reached 80. I made some instant coffee. I've been drinking that too much today. So I'll continue some more. <laughs> what about you? I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. I've had a good weekend so far. Um, uh, I actually didn't... Well... I actually didn't really do any Manim stuff uh, all weekend. Or very, very little only. Like answered one or two questions here and there. Because I've been playing a lot of Path of Exile recently. Uh, on Friday the new season started. Or League. And so I've been playing Coffee Lover, just like me. Indeed. Indeed. I really like... For some reason, I really... I don't know. Sometimes I feel like tea, but as soon as it's it's getting warmer outside, I, I transition back to coffee for some reason. I don't know why. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought I would do like maybe an hour or two of, of, of Manim stuff. Um, perhaps finish up. Perhaps finish up the... Or try to finish up the, the little tutorial that we've that we've written with the deep dive then yeah i've i've been making some i've, I've been thinking a little bit about uh, the other tutorials as well in the in the documentation and i think i think we should change things but i'll i'll, I'll talk more about that a little bit later well actually i don't want to talk later i want to talk now uh, let me open up stuff. Let me show you things. Wait, you can't even see my desktop yet. What even is this? Highly agree. Yeah. So. Manim's, uh, uh, Manim's tutorial. Well, I, I would like to say system, but I, the tutorials Manim has in written form are really quite limited we have this one here that's the quick start tutorial in which very very briefly many things are touched like creation of of a new project into wait there should be a um, yeah there it is table of content somewhere uh, animation transforming positioning the animate syntax and then that's it and after that, I'm not sure how much usable tutorial content there is on the website. Because, I mean, there is this thing here, Manim's Buildings Blocks uh, tutorial, where I'm not even sure what exactly happens here. A little bit more about objects. Uh, something about positioning, again. I mean, more positioning methods. Styling objects, which is also relevant somehow. Uh, screen order, which is a big issue. And then we go into animations and talk a little bit about that stuff. So it's it's sort of a more detailed uh, quick start in, in some sense. And then there is a section about creating a custom animation, which I don't think should even be in here. Using coordinates of an object is, is in here. It, it's the, the things that are in here are so random somehow. So yeah, I feel this should be revamped a little bit. And then scenes are only like for, there's only like one paragraph on them. And then after that, there is this deeper look tutorial, which actually concer mainly concerns the, the, the configuration, which somehow is confusing to me that this is called deeper look because that's not really what I would expect. I would, if, if I would read a tutorial that's called a deeper look, I would rather expect something on the magnitude of things that I'm writing right now. So something that, that tells you a little bit more about how things work internally inside of the library and not really something. Can you send me the link of this page? Sure. There you go. So yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I'm kinda unhappy with this. So there's this and then there's a separate thing which concerns configuration. Which isn't real. I mean, it has... I don't know, the information is so random here. So this this discusses some of the of the output options that you have and some of the section information It's so I don't know it's so random it's so random And then there's this I think this is this is actually quite okay the the using text tutorial um but I think it should be it should be it should also get a, a nicer title like I don't know of using text, maybe rendering text or rendering text and formulas or something like that to express that you can do both. Otherwise, I think this is fine. This is this is more this is this readable. You can work through this. Uh, just the title is not really matching. So yeah, and then I I feel like maybe there should be maybe there should be. Maybe it should be a separate thing. Maybe it should be a separate thing. So right now we have one section installation, which is fine. Then there's the section tutorials, which I'm not really happy with, but uh, it's, it is how it is right now. There's the example gallery. There's the change log, which has the well, change log. <laughs> then there's the reference manual, which contains all of the documentation, something about plugins, something about reporting bugs, internal structure, blah, blah, blah. This should be probably empty. Yeah, thought so. Thought so. Um, so what I would like to see is somehow where where would you expect to find what are those examples in the documentation? Yeah, that's here. That's the example gallery, which is basically a well collection of of all sorts of examples. It would be nice to to change some of those and, and make replace some of them with nicer ones or ones that are more expressive for some reason the one that we have down here with the with the little circle and the, and the dot traveling along i feel like this is done in such a complicated way i'm not sure i would do it i would i would like to see this as a as a, as a example on the landing page no documentation i mean uh what about them I think it's fine to have to have examples throughout the, the gallery, right? Uh, th not throughout the gallery, throughout the, the, the reference manual mainly. Not sure whether there's anything particular about them that you... Yeah, that's the, that's the documentation for the right animation, right? So that's here. Creation right, this one. I think in general these are fine to have because if you're looking for some particular animation I guess it's nice to see an example of how how to use it right the examples elaborated in these pages yeah what about those when you go to the definition something yeah, yeah, yeah but 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 what do you mean you got some extra examples yeah, yeah, yeah but what about them yo Gandil. nice to see you how's it going hello <laughs> Hello, 
It's a good page to welcome new people. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna send you an example in Discord. I I still don't know what you want to what you want to say regarding these. Yourself, I'm also fine. I'll currently looking through some things that we maybe want to change up in the documentation here, and otherwise I'm having also a fine evening. Wait, let me check my... So, Bellamed is sending me something on Discord. Let me see. Oh, it's not here yet. I miscounted. Uh, wait, then let's go back to the website. Wait, where's the website now? It disappeared. No, it didn't. There we go. So my question would be, given that we have this sort of structure here right now, and I, I think there's something is missing here. I would like to have a place where you can find information. So some sort of FAQ maybe, but 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 different. So what I mean is, I don't know. I would like to I would like to document somewhere. Uh, the different the different ways how to how to run uh, the library. Yo, Trollkirche! <laughs> I was I was considering texting you on Discord already. <laughs> Check whether everything is okay. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> Hope you're doing okay. So exhausting the evening the last weeks. Yeah, I can I can understand and actually also relate. I missed stream. Welcome back. Welcome back. Stream missed you as well. <laughs> oh. Wait, so now Oilamit. Did you miss me? Oh, every we missed you as well, Oilamit. Let me quickly check again Discord. Uh, general. Yeah, 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 I know, I know these. So this is this is um, the example in the doc string. Wait, let me let me. I can show this to chat uh, here. So if we go to the source, then we see the example is also written here. What do you want to say about these? I'm still not sure what what what. What you mean so these examples are here and they they i think they can be useful um when you when you look up something that you immediately see how it looks like i think that that makes a lot of sense what do you mean they should be they should be presented in a better way because it's true that they take up a lot of space here and, and it might not be clear that i mean i, I think if one thing is clear, then I think that then that this code snippet here belongs to the video above. I think that's clear. Just ask if you're satisfied about them. I missed that. I missed that, and I'm so confused. I was so confused the entire time because I didn't know what you wanted to uh, know about them. Um, I think I'm mostly fine with them. Yo, yo, Epkia! Nice to see you. How's life? Everyone's here. That's nice. Ooh. Whoa. Troik Ish just resubscribed for three months. Three month already, people shy. <laughs> Thanks for the three month resub. Wow. Time's been flying. Jesus. It's already been three months since I've been, well, doing this a bit more regularly. Crazy. Ah. <laughs> I 
I like how Brian actually um, pronounces your name in a sort of correct way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also, Ipkia, nice to hear that things are going well. It's good to hear. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if, if Brian would do much better if he would say Trollkirche. <laughs> ah. So, phonetically, it's close at least, which is good. <laughs> Imagine if it would sound completely different. <laughs> That'd be weird. He tried it. <laughs> he did, he did. Yo, guys. Question, 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 question. I've been talking with Eulamid already a little bit about this. So... What do you think? If if you have a structure like this, so if if... You have these sections in the documentation. And if you were looking for information on, say, I don't know, how to run an animation from the Python script, where would you look? Is there a place you would look already? Or is it is would you look at that and then give up immediately because nothing nothing sticks, so to say? Nothing is appropriate. What do you guys think? So some sort of... I think I'm, I'm looking for... Um, I don't know. That For me, that's questions that are, that are not... that don't really fit into the, the tutorials category. Um, that, that would probably span like, say, two or three paragraphs. Um, and that are fairly concrete in some sense. Some sort of, of meta information, not really how to animate something uh, concretely, but more, more of a... I don't know. I don't find anything helpful on the website. I usually use Control F in Discord server and then find something similar to my question. Yeah, I mean, the Discord server is, of course... What if the Discord server didn't exist? Usually my questions are basic since I started to learn money recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does make sense. I wonder whether it, was, it would be worth to split the tutorial section somehow. But I don't have a good word for what I what I what I try to include. It's somehow somehow it's on the level of of, of you know these these um, many programming languages and libraries have these sort of, of cookbooks where you have short recipes for for certain fairly particular things that that um, you want to do. And I'm not sure where I put where I would put recipes like that in in our documentation. Because I think it doesn't fit in the example gallery. I mean, if it's an animation recipe, then it would probably fit in the example gallery, actually. Also, my topic started to, uh, start to shine in Stack Overflow. I've been trying to uh, answer questions that come up in Stack Overflow, true. And others, of course, as well. Uh, I know that, that Aqua Beam answered some and then... Actually, a few other people where I'm not exactly sure uh, who they are, but I'm, I'm sure they are on the Discord as well. Somewhat sure. So yeah, my my suggestion would be I don't know. I don't know what my suggestion is. That's the problem. I'll try to write some best practice for money and flying frames. True, I've seen that before. Wait, if I click here, will that open? Also, hey, hey, cool, cool. Uh Wait, did I res did I reply to your latest message from Discord? Probably not. Let me quickly check. Oh yeah, that's the, the answer to your question is yes. It's perfectly fine. Go ahead. Feel free. 
um, but I'll also reply later. The example gallery is good whenever I need to make a plot, I copy the config from there instead of trying to figure it out from the docs. I feel like I feel like the, the example gallery could be much better. But that's I think that's a different that's a different thing. Uh, it's so I think the, the example gallery is sort of unstructured. And it has a lot of, of really random things in, in it. But well, that's a that's a different issue. Uh, something that's really neat to be able to search for a problem that is visually similar to what you're looking for. That's true, that's true. That's true. I mean, you guys are the developers. A uh, website should be kind of all money related stuff and it should be well organized. True, true, true. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what's the... The issue is, the issue is... If we propose to make a change, then we should stick to that somehow. And it's hard to stick to something. It's hard to be consistent with these things. So we could, I, I could propose some some reorganization of the of the uh, example gallery, but I'm 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 just not sure what would be the best future-proof option somehow. Uh, did you use this Manim for your calculation in some mathematical videos? No, 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 I, I didn't. Um, Manim is, is, I don't know, for, for live computation things, it's it's not so well suited. Um, for the AHS Matur, I used SageMath, which is like a computer algebra system. Manim is, is only for, for like making pretty pictures and, and visualizations. If you want to see something that I made with Manim recently, then I have a video. Uh, wait, do I have a... No, I don't. I should. Wait, let me link the thing. Um... So I've, I've recently, I've, I, I sat down and, and produced a, in my opinion, nice little... Uh, mathematics explanation video for something for a result that I like. It's it's not really high school math though. Will I talk now? No, I don't. Good. So that's the video that I'm talking about. Um. I use kernel, I feel like an algebra <laughs> or an operating system developer. True. <laughs> so many kernels everywhere. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to know the thing that I used for the computation, for the um, BHS version, for the BHS version, I used GeoGebra, which is well more well known. And for the uh, AHS version, I used the thing which I usually use in, in my day-to-day -day work, which is uh, SageMath. Ooh, flashbang! It's this thing here. Um, it's pretty cool, but uh, you need to it, it you need to know a little bit about Python and stuff. Uh, to really get going with it. The thing I like about it is that it's uh, open source and, and, and freely available for everyone. Some other computer algebra systems that are that are more common for like mathematicians, like Mathematica or for Mathematica, um, they are not free, which which I kind of not like. Take some Python courses. It's going to yeah. I mean, only if you want to learn Manim. If you don't want to, if you're if you're here because you come from uh, Matura content, then. Uh, yeah, that's something else. <laughs> also, Maple, uh, Maple and Matlab. Yeah, yeah. All of them non free, unfortunately. Uh, 
was once very motivated to contribute examples to the official docs, but there are lots of issues that make it difficult to write in RST and getting the annotation right, always writing uh, all docs built and then waiting for reviews. Yeah. I don't, personally, I don't have, an, have that big of an issue with the indentation because I, what I what I usually do when I when I contribute an example or when I when I add something to the gallery is I uh, hop into some file, then I take the entire code that I feel like fits for my example, and then I just do this uh, dot dot manim, then the class name blah blah blah, blah whatever, and then I hop in, paste the thing from the file, and then. Uh, mark everything and hit indent some number of times. I think once is okay here, maybe twice. But yeah, I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. And the reviews, yeah, we've we've been we've been pretty slow with that as, as well, unfortunately. I I can definitely understand why you why you went and and did your own thing. Makes sense. Animate function in Maple makes me laugh so hard. Yeah, other computer systems uh, have a different approach to these sort of things. Also, also Sage can can output uh, some some basic animations uh, by rendering them as GIFs. And what you do is basically you well tell the system how every single frame should look like, and then and then it concatenates them. Which well, it's not that different to be quite honest. It's just more convenient. Oh. Well, when changes come from a review, one has to paste it again to Python test it and add indentation again. Yeah, it's it's. I agree that it's not the, the smoothest workflow. But still, I, I I don't think I don't think that 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 um, I personally don't have an have that big of an issue with the formatting. But I understand where you're coming from. Okay, so let's do something. There was there was something that I that I looked at recently. Um, the website should be here. Check Discord. Uh, okay, let me briefly check Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me show. Let me show this to people. Oh. I think the resolution is mainly the problem here, perhaps also the frame rate. But it, it gets the point across, basically. Thinking of Sage reminded me of my favorite way to mean triangle. <laughs> Go by reinforced edge. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on Maple. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, the, the main point of Maple is not animations. That's the thing, right? So, Manim's main thing is animation. So, I, I it, it's not a surprise that it does that better. That's not a surprise. Okay, um, let me briefly check because I think one pull request has been merged already. How was that this one? I thought this one was merged. What was this? I had an angle. True. Uh, let's merge this so that we have done something today already. Enable auto merge. Update. Then there was a second one, uh, which I think was this one here. 
which only updates the order of of the tutorials and i think i think we should actually rename them as well so quick start is fine i think quick start is a is a good and fitting name building blocks also kind of makes sense but doesn't really doesn't go as deep as i would expect it to and a deeper look is i think not a good name because it doesn't say anything about the, the content and uh, personally i think the, the expectations i have from from a tutorial that's called deeper look that doesn't really match the, the the reality of what it really is so yeah, the question is whether we go and just merge this and then be happy and do everything else in a follow-up in a follow-up commit or whether we do something else here. That's too long. <sighs> hmm. Is OpenGL mentioned in the website? I'm not sure. It's possible that it simply is not mentioned. Uh, no. No. But there is a there there is a good resource on on rendering with OpenGL. Um, uh, Aqua Beams OpenGL guide. Let me give you the link. Uh, you can certainly also find it uh, on, on Discord directly. But let me briefly give you the link. Your video was cool too? Yeah, I, yeah the link, the, the resource I'm talking about is in the description there. There it is. That's the thing I'm talking about. And that's, that's a useful thing. The issue, the issue with um, not having OpenGL currently mentioned in the documentation anywhere is that the way how things are right now is very confusing. We don't have a clean way of... of um, There's a huge amount of duplication basically currently in, in the Manim's code base. Many things are uh, shared between the, the OpenGL renderer and the Cairo renderer. Um, and I feel like it's it, it doesn't make sense to duplicate all of the examples, all of the whatever. Um, but yeah. I think that's the, that's the main reason why there is no there is no clean separation right now, or, or why why we why we don't include OpenGL in, in in rendering the documentation right now. Also because there's there's literally no no information. So even if we if we would include the the, the special um, when I when I say uh, it's not included, I mean I mean the documentation for the OpenGL only um object and stuff is not included in the documentation so no opengl vim object and stuff these are these are simply because the documentation i think looks the same as for as for a vim object we can check actually uh if we go to the document the, the file opengl vectorized object and then look at class opengl vim object then the documentation of this is the single line a vectorized object and if we check in comparison vectorized object then we have at least a little bit more information even there is a vectorized object which is identical and then there is some documentation on some of the parameters of of, of the object that's a problem that's a problem but we we don't have we, we don't have better documentation that we could include so yeah that's the main issue here that's the main issue here i think what i would like to do 
in terms of, of working on the library is first I want to um, well finish the thing that I'm currently working on, which is this this uh, tutorial on on how the internals of the the, the actual deep dive into the internals, um, which at this point looks pretty well. Uh, it's I, I think I would say I have like maybe 80% of this is done and, and we only have to describe basically the, the render loop where actually rendering happens. So this, this is something that, that I want to write a little bit about this today. Um, not sure whether we can do the entire render loop because th this will take some more time, but uh, I think we can do all of the stuff that happens before that. That should be possible in, in today's stream. Because there's not, these are like maybe two or three paragraphs or so, and then we can actually also start with the render loop. And as soon as, as this as this article is done, I would, I'm not sure what I want to do. Either I want to work on on unifying uh, the well structure of the of the of Manimus objects a little bit, so that um, there isn't this this confusion between uh, between um, there, so that we that we reduce the, the amount of, of code duplication that we currently have a little bit, or whether it is rewriting the the tutorials and 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 actually, I don't know. I really would like to. Do you know the feeling when you want to change something but you don't know exactly how to change it or to what to change? I ju I'm just unsatisfied with the current situation, but I, I'm not sure where I want to go. And that makes me, yeah, kind of unhappy. Omega Lul, yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> Too well. <laughs> so yeah, the aim will be to... <laughs> I know it too well. In the end, we should we should be in a better place. That that's the thing I want to achieve somehow. I'm not sure how to get there, but yeah. I literally had the feeling this morning too. <laughs> this morning even. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah. And did you find a solution this morning? <laughs> or are you still unhappy? <laughs> but time passed anyways. <laughs> no, but time heals what reason cannot. <laughs> it's true. Very true, very true. You feel wise? You should. You should. Only wise people say something like that. <laughs> the philosopher, indeed. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Take notes, chat. Take notes. <sighs> Yo, shall we produce a few paragraphs here? Um, like a little bit here, and then maybe some here, and then maybe we are happy. I wrote an I wrote an overview uh, on my way to work a few days ago. On f no, was it on Friday? Maybe. I think it was on Friday. So I did some work off stream actually. Wow. Um. Yeah, I think I want to do that now. Again, not the most entertaining stream content, but yeah, I'm happy to answer questions in between. And maybe I'll, I'll write a few paragraphs and then we we'll do something else. Don't feel like doing this the entire evening, probably. I would actually also consider streaming Power of Exile, but but the problem is that it's it's almost it's it's. I I've said before I I only have my my laptop right now that I work and and, and and play and stream on. But yeah, the game is the game is unfortunately too intense for my laptop already. So I 
playing it is, not, is, is already not uh, the best experience. <laughs> I'm not sure whether streaming would improve that. Uh, did someone try to animate the double pendulum? Um, I've seen animations of the double pendulum. pendulum. Um, I think just take a look in, in our projects channel in Discord and search for the double pendulum. I'm sure you'll find something. A few questions. What is Manu? Where is Manu? Who is Manu? Why is Manu? <laughs> I think the first question I can answer. Second is much more difficult already. Who is Manim? Not sure. Not sure. I have an answer for that. Why is Manim? And that I definitely don't have an answer for. <laughs> when is Manim? Right now. Here. We, we are here. <sighs> How is Manim? <laughs> Bad. <laughs> That's an obvious one. I just want to know if it changed the parameter, does the motion change too? Yeah, it does. That, that I can answer without rendering the animation for the double pendulum. <laughs> it's a very unstable thing. If you change something in the in the slightest, it will the, the resulting curve will change dr dramatically. But yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure there is this code on... on uh, in there, there should be code examples as well. That's what I'm talking about. Good stuff. I'm not happy. Me too. Me too. In general, I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what, chat? Let's start with rendering the current status of things and then we take a look at what we write next. White people happy. Indeed. Uh, docs make html o equals minus t skip manim There we go, reading sources. That we'll find out that nothing has changed. Some warnings, we ignore those. <laughs> I should probably fix those. Camera frame, okay, that's because I, I was lazy and did not clear the thing entirely. Versions RST, that's, that's fine, it's fine. And a mathematician was famous for being optimistic too much, ladies and gentlemen. Leibniz? You mean Leibniz? Why was he too optimistic? There are some other examples as well, probably. Leibniz. I would imagine that Galois was also quite optimistic that he would survive the duel. The arrival of Newton. Yeah, 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 I know. Galois was probably also optimistic that he would survive the duel. Poor Galois, indeed. Is the story... Wait. The other name that I that I remember in this context is... Is, um, is he called Hippasos of Metapond? The guy that 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 uh, found that that the diagonal, I think the side length and the side and the diagonal in the in the pentagram um, don't share a rational ratio, which means, well, I'm not sure. Is the story true that they that they uh, well took him on a boat ride and returned without him? <laughs> Pythagoreans were not the nicest of people. Or maybe very particular about some things. I remember the story going something like that. But I'm not sure. 
I never really had a full lecture on history of mathematics. I should maybe read a book or two. Expect anything from those Greek people? Not wrong, not wrong. Okay. Um, where is my thing? There it is. Okay. Wait, what? Why did it render the examples? I'm confused. Didn't I say... Is it with a minus? I'm confused. Hmm, weird. It is how it is. Why did so many mathematicians die so young? They either killed or die of some disease, Galois, Aber, this goes on. Riemann 2. I mean, there are, there are many, there are many very tragic examples in the history of mathematics. But I feel like most, I mean, certainly most people don't suffer such a, such a uh, tragic fate. That would be bad. But then, then I should, then I should maybe rethink my line of work again, if that were true. <laughs> Hilbert lived so long. Yeah, yeah, and also there are many, there are many examples of, of very old mathematicians. Okay, uh, let's check. What did we write? Where did we stop? Okay, so the animation should be here, which it isn't right now, but uh, that's probably because I have it uh, rendered local. Oh, no, it's here. Fine. Okay, that's the example that we're discussing in, in the article, if you don't know it yet. In case you're new to, new to this part of the stream, <laughs> this is the example that this is, uh, article is about. Then there's lots of text already describing all sorts of things until we hit the play call. And then we talked, what's the last thing that we talked about? Uh, process, render obtains the information it needs compile animation data okay so we are in we are in the play call already renderer continues to prepare for entering the render loop uh renderer checks whether or not my name's caching system should be used true true okay so we 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 are right before the step where the renderer checked whether it should use the caching system or not In my university department, we have a Hilbert and an Abo, students though, not faculty. We feel fan- Oh, you should feel fancy. <laughs> not bad, not bad. <laughs> you should make them publish something together. <laughs> it would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> um, university is not special. I don't think you know it. It's called Ignozor. No, I don't know it, unfortunately. But it doesn't. That doesn't mean anything. Okay. We don't feel fancy. Oh, I doubt it's true. I doubt it's true. Okay, I'll write like two or three paragraphs and then we'll do something else. Maybe we'll play something together. If we could play a round of, of uh, Garticon stream or something like that, that would be fun. Or that was fun the last time we did that. We did that. Or the words game, that was also fun. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Let's go and write a paragraph or two and then we did some work and then we can play that's how that's how life works right 
that's how it works. Okay, where are we? Uh, we are in the renderer, question mark? Yes, I think we're right here, actually. If animations should, should be skipped, they are skipped. Otherwise, otherwise, we check whether caching is disabled, and if it is not, then we get the then we get the hash from the play call. We check whether it's already cached, and if it is and has the same cache, then we use the existing one, and we don't do anything new. We continue. But this doesn't render it, right? This does, because the rendering happens here. That's here. So the, the entry of the render loop is actually here. The plain kernel call is the one that actually uh, moves Manim in, into the, the actual render loop, I would say. So in the plain kernel call, there's this, this time progression and then we step through every frame of the, of the animation until we uh, everything is rendered. Let me actually always increase the size of this window a little bit. So you have an e easier time reading if you want to. You don't have to, of course. You can also just vibe with the music a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Um, we are over this part here. So let me check that I've described this. Otherwise, the renderer checks whether or not Manim's caching system should be used. The idea of the caching system is simple. For every play call, a hash value is computed, which is then stored and upon re-rendering the scene. The hash is generated again and checked against the stored value. If it is the same, the cached output, output is reused. Otherwise, it is fully re-rendered again. We will not go into details of the caching system here. If you would like to learn more, the get hash from play call function, the uh, hashing module is essentially the entry point to the caching mechanism. Okay, so if it has been rendered before, it would use the mechanism. It has not been rendered before, so we actually go and render now. What do we need to do? Wait, where is it? I will lose this constantly if it's not right next to it. Well written. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I really hope that in the end, all of this will be somehow comprehensible. It's it's a long article, uh, but I, I I think I think it will make the lives of everyone who wants to uh, start contributing to the library a little bit easier because they have some sort of well, entry point that they can where they can read how how things actually work and they don't have to figure it out for themselves, which is how well, most of the current devs have had to do it if they want to get a bigger picture somehow. Um, okay. File writer add partial movie file hash current animation. That's something that's that's sort of interesting to me. So before the the the, the partial movie file is written, the file writer already has the name of the file that should be output to. That's kind of interesting. Yo, yo, Himi. Nice to see you again. People chat. Chat's pretty active today. Which is nice. Which is very nice. Self animation hashes append. That's also curious. Why do we need the animation hashes list? What is that for? Is that even used somewhere? Can't recall seeing that a lot. Um, dot animation hashes. Ah, animations hashes. I mean, that doesn't really look like it's used a lot. I think that could probably be refactored. 
so that it uses the whatever list the file writer stores it in. People chat indeed. <laughs> that could probably be refactored. I, I'm not going so I'll even though we've we've seen quite a few things that should be that we could rewrite uh, more or less easily throughout uh, creating this article. I, I don't do any refactorings right now because I the aim of this is just to, to document how things are right now and then we can well deal with changing things afterwards. Which reminds me, I should probably include some sort of disclaimer that that the um, this 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 guide that I'm writing is is for some fixed version of the library and things might change afterwards. I'm not sure how easy it will be to maintain uh, well how things work actually. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so animations hashes. That's this list here. There's a debug thing. Let's say that all of this has happened. I don't think that there's any really necessary information uh, for people in these three lines. Well, it's sep six lines, five lines, whatever. I can't count. Okay, the next relevant line is here. Um, this is where the file writer is asked to begin the animation. And I think this opens the part, the, the um, um, FFmpeg pipe, uh, which then expects uh, input in the form of, of rendered pictures, basically. You can't count? No, I really can't. I, I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> you want to hear a fun story? When I did my defense for my PhD, um, one of the questions was about uh, explaining some sort of, of bijection, and I had some some small example uh, of a uh, of a tree. So that's a, that's a graph, and nodes were labeled uh, I don't know, one to nine or so. Um, and <laughs> in the bijection, I, I explained how things worked, and in the in the end, <laughs> me and the examiners looked at the board. And we found that for some reason I I missed the number five. I just went one, two, four, six. I I, I completely stepped over five and ignored ex its existence. It was it was clear that 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 um, I knew how 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 five would work, but <laughs> neither the examiners uh, during my explanation of the procedure nor anyone else noticed that I just stepped over five and only at the very end after I was done with my explanation people pointed out there is a, there, there might be something that's not quite right <laughs> that was quite yeah five denier indeed indeed in your bio you write uh, I like counting things I do I do I do just not really myself <laughs> I usually let the computer count things for me which it can do much more reliable than me it's much better the computer is much much better than uh, at me than count at counting so yeah that that's to my counting abilities <laughs> one to n minus five more or less like that more or less like that who needs five anyways it's just such an odd number Literally. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, what does file writer begin animations do exactly, and why is this? Why, why does this happen? Not self skip animations. So this means the argument. The argument is whether or not it should not skip. Whether whether or not it should actually render animations. I think. Uh, let's go and look at the file writer. Where is it? File writer. Scene file writer. Dev begin animation. Allow write. What? Oh, Jesus. I mean, okay. If this is false then it just doesn't open the movie pipeline. Okay. File path is none. What happens if the file path is none? 
explain yourself. If file path, file path is none, then the file path is self partial movie files rendered. Ah, there it gets the name from. So if. <laughs> okay. So the, the hash thing generates a name, which the file writer then uses or gets at this point because it knows how many how many play calls have already been processed and it accesses uh, accesses uh, this thing and, and yeah I bet today's stream uh, you got confused more than any stream ever <laughs> no no I mean maybe everyone else here is, is very confused right now but that's Personally, I'm on I'm, I'm on the, the usual level of confusion, I would say. <laughs> not too bad, but also not zero. Um, okay, and there's just begin animation. It's not some weird stuff where it it's actually begins animation or something. Okay, no, it's fine. Okay, so begin animations file writer begin animation this one this one this one this one, this one um, opens the fmpeg movie pipeline open movie pipe and how does it do that well there's some command it runs it's really just some it's really just some thing it gets the name it writes the thing comment rendered with my community I don't think that this makes a lot of sense here the metadata is not for the partial movie files they should be the metadata should be set for the for the combined file I hope this happens as well I mean I'm sure it does otherwise it wouldn't and yeah then there's some stuff here. And the important thing is that um, it this is this is a sub process which is open and expects uh, input from the uh, well from the pipe stuff should get piped into there and manim does that that's what manim does exactly so the the render the render loop will exactly pipe stuff into this open movie pipe which is set as the, the writing process of the thing. Okay. Open movie pad for one play call. <clears throat> um, In the event that the animation has to be rendered, Manim opens or um, the renderer asks the file writer. Can I just wait? Is that just file writer? scene file writer asks the scene asks its scene file writer to begin the animation wait that's lame I shouldn't do that um, asks its scene file writer to open To start a sub process with a FFM, with a car to FFM, FFM pick, which expect 
expects input Wait, that's weird. Why am I writing it like this? The renderer asks... Sorry, there's a cable here and I'm kind of annoyed by it. How should we describe this? The renderer does what? Oh no, where were we? Get frame, freeze, whatever. Render. There we are. The renderer asks the file writer to begin animation, which essentially means used internally by Manu to stream the animation to FFmpeg for displaying or writing to a file. That. Exactly that. <clears throat> um, to start a sub process with the call to FFmpeg so that rendered frames can be stream to start a sub process which expects which accepts um The renderer asks its scene file writer to start a writing process. This process <clears throat> accepts uh, rendered. This process is I'm not sure how to get this right. That's kind of weird. This is call, done by the calling the method scene file writer start writing method. No, unfortunately, that's not true. <laughs> I like when Copilot tries to help. I really like that. It's just not true. <laughs> <clears throat> the process is opened, is started by a call to ffmpeg and opens a pipe to which rendered uh, frames raw frames can be written banning copilot for not giving a true answer yo I prefer banning I'm curious. That's completely unrelated. <laughs> Not sure why I said that before. Um, I was wondering whether my bot still runs. It does. It does. Good stuff. Bean counter bot still alive. I was wondering. I didn't touch it in forever. Also, I was curious whether the, the Spotify integration thing that I did uh, still worked. I, I really pieced this together manually, so I'm actually quite proud that it does. <laughs> Just, that was quite interesting, actually, to get this to work, but well. Okay. Uh, the process starts by a call to FMPEG and opens a pipe to which rendered raw frames can be streamed. We talk about streaming here. Well, I'm actually written is probably better, but... Do we write or do we stream files? What do you think, chat? What's better? I think that's just a minor semantical issue. Maybe write... We write to a pipe, right? Let's see. Written. Except if everyone is outraged by written, then I'll change it. Um, the renderer asks its scene file writer to start a writing process. The process is started by a call to fmpeg and opens a pipe to which rendered raw frames can be written. Um, as long as the pipe is open, 
it can be accessed the process can be accessed via the writer attribute of the render almost true uh, but it's called um what is it called i think it was a uh, writing process open movie pipe self thought writing process yeah so it's the writing process attribute of the file writer attribute of the not of the renderer but of the file writer Okay, so we have opened a movie pipe. Good. Almost at copilot. <laughs> Just had to change two things in the sentence to make it right. <laughs> there's this there's this <laughs> there's this thing. Uh, what's the phrase that I've heard before? <laughs> I think that's something to some degree, deeply Austrian. Um, it goes something like, uh, salad tastes best if you replace it with a schnitzel before eating. <laughs> I just came back, what happened? Uh, we were complimenting, we were complimenting Copilot for um, almost doing something right. <laughs> Okay, movie pipe is now open. With the open movie pipe, what happens next? Torakirsha <laughs> has heard this before, maybe. <laughs> next, the scene is asked to begin the animations, and that's where actually things happen. Um, with the writing process in place, the scene, the renderer then asks the scene to, to begin the animations. And this is where we probably also have to talk a little bit about um, these different methods for, for animations, because I'm not sure how clear I've been on those. Just to teach uh, Pink Counterpart to answer if we ping her. True, true, true. I should do that. I should do that. I don't think that's too difficult even. Hmm. But not now. I'll put it on my list. What did I say about animations so far? Uh, animations in the render loop. Oh, wait, let me increase this a little bit. Otherwise, you can't read. So we say there are these special methods, animation begin, which is called at the beginning of every animation. So before the first frame is rendered, it's required setup for uh, in it, all the required setup for the animation happens. Okay, that's actually, I don't think I need to say much more. Finish is there and inter inter interpolate is there. Good. I think the rest can probably be explained in, in terms of particular examples of the thing. So the renderer begins the this the renderer asks the scene to begin the animations and then the scene does that. Begin animations. And what does that do? It calls setup scene and begin for all of the animations. And that's it. Ah, and that's also important. That's also important. The moving and static objects uh, thing happens here. Only some basic uh, ones, AI courses, but it didn't do with AI, just select random quotes. Ah, with the bot that you developed, I see.
<laughs> oh, you bring new chatters in here. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> that was something that confused me quite a bit, actually. Um, when I put in, when I brought in my bean counter bot, it did not display <laughs> its first message in this channel as an as an actually uh, first time chatter, and I was so confused by that. But your bot I see is a first time chatter. <laughs> Everyone loves Troll Kirsche. He has been here before. I, he must have been here before, which is kind of weird because like I created the account and then the first thing I tried was was sending a message in my channel. And I didn't see that as a first time chat. But maybe I was maybe there was some weird login stuff or so. I don't know. Anyhow, begin animations does two things. First, it calls animation.begin and animation setup scene for all of the animations, and second, it takes care of the moving static object um, object thing. And that I do have to explain. I do have to explain that. It actually also says here. Um, it does so by doing two the following two things. First, it literally uh, begins all of the animations by calling their um, setup methods which is not just unfortunately not animation setup but it is begin and before that it is what was it called setup scene setup scene i don't think it's, uh, that's publicly documented but because there is a it starts with an underscore uh, but it's still true wait where is it setup scene and begin right and the point is in the setup scene step um in this step the objects that are introduced they will be added to the to the scene let's pay let's pay attention to pen but by no means if if if, if chat is if, if if you manage to to entertain yourselves then please do that <laughs> I'm basically sitting here and scratching my head and, and trying to produce a few paragraphs of text. I know that's not I, I know that's not the, the most entertaining stream, but it might be interesting to some if, if you if you're interested into the library or so into very particular aspects of the library, I should say. Oh, cheer, 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 cheer. <laughs> Overfeld bot at least talks back. It's also nice. <laughs> oh no, it has noticed that I that I mentioned it. <laughs> it just I like how it just beeps in different in just in different messages. He doesn't like you, it seems. Well, he better he better likes me. <laughs> He's in my chat after all. This is a hate watcher free zone. <laughs> I'll make sure of that. <laughs> no. No. Okay, <laughs> she deleted message. <laughs> well executed, well executed. <laughs> um...
let's say something about animation begin and animation finish. Uh, anime and the setup scene one. In this step, um, the most notable thing that can that happens in this step is that objects um, for which an that. The objects that are newly introduced by an animation, like by a class create, etc., um, are Added to the scene. Yo, Copilot had it right. And otherwise, the begin method is really not that interesting. If we go to animation and look at begin. That was a bit rough. <laughs> I don't think that the uh, um, begin method is an actual boss time. <laughs> Where was this? There it is. Um, it creates the starting object, it suspends the updating of the of the original object and it in it, it, it uh, sets the it sets the, the, the status of the of the object to the beginning of the animation basically. Let's write that. I thought it has a victory song. We have too few victories for that to be a thing. <laughs> um, among other things. Wait, let's 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 see. Uh As cons consequence, the objects are newly introduced by an animation, blah, 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 are added to the scene. Then, The starting object is created. A uh, starting object. The animation keeps furthermore. The animation creates I think I don't want to mention the starting object because it's just confusing at this point I think it, it makes more sense if we go through it in a in a an example furthermore so the next thing that happens is that uh, the animation suspends um updater functions being called on 
the mob checked that it is. On its mob checked. And it sets the and it sets its object to the state that corresponds to the first frame of the animation. Yeah, that, that's what that's what's happening. So first, the, the the if it is introduced, it is added to the scene. Um, all the updates are suspended, and it the, the the thing is set to the first the, the the state is set to the first frame of the animation. True. Okay, so that's the first step that happens in the in the begin thingy. Uh, what's next? It's the scene that has to talk right now. There we go. Right, the uh, moving object stuff. And then, after all, after this has happened for, for, for all animations in the current play car. The Cairo renderer determines which of the current, which of the scenes, objects can be painted statically to the background and which ones have to be redrawn every frame. It does so by calling, what's the name? Scene. Get moving and static objects. By calling method scene get moving and static objects and it popul by calling the um and the corresponding partition of objects is added is Stored in the corresponding wait and the corresponding partition and the resulting partition. And the resulting partition of object is stored in the corresponding uh, moving objects and static objects attribute respectively. Uh, is this a sentence? After this has happened for all animations in the current play call, the Kyo renderer de determines which of the scenes objects can be painted statically to the background and which ones have to be redrawn every frame. It does so by calling blub and the resulting partition of objects is stored in the corresponding moving objects and static objects attributes. And then I don't have to put respectively. I think that's that's fine. I think that's fine. Okay. Should we say more about this mechanism? I should I, maybe I can give a note. Do I want to say more about this mechanism? Maybe.
Wait, what does Copilot want to say? The reason why the renderer has to begin the animations is that the animations are not yet in their final state when the scene is rendered. This is because the animations are suspended during the setup phase and resumed when the scene is rendered. <laughs> That's a nice sounding sentence, but it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I should I should just I don't know edit and keep it. <laughs> it sounds so professional though. It really does. I think it would re it would look really nice <laughs> if I just edit it. <laughs> but I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't keep it. Um so what do we say about this? What do we say about the thing? Urp. From dev get moving and static objects because this is kind of complicated um what it does it takes is it takes arm objects uh, it filters out the foreground objects no it it, it, it gets both so sorry that the, the objects and the foreground objects it, it, it extracts all of the the the, the objects, so that only objects without any children are, are in the list. And then it gets the moving objects, and then it uh, removes the other ones. And the moving objects are determined by checking whether they have an updater attached or any of their children have an update or touch something like that it's kind of weird so it's perfect uh i love how copilot reads structure it knew that all of your lines have a maximum length so it perfectly added line breaks indeed it's it's very good at that it's very very good at that um the mechanism mechanism that determines static and moving um, objects is specific for the Cairo renderer. The OpenGL renderer does not just works differently. Um, basically, static objects are determined by oh, basically moving objects are determined by checking whether they any of their children or any of the objects below them um, in the sense of the order in which objects are processed in the scene that's not a sentence but we'll, we can improve it later um, any of the objects below them by checking whether they any of the children or any of the objects below them um, either have an update uh, update function attached or whether they appear in one of the current animations So that's what the renderer basically does. It it 
takes our objects, it splits them all apart, so it only looks at the actual objects without uh, any any containers or any groups or anything. It really looks at the actual objects. It processes them from bottom to top, so the ones that get that get rendered first onto the screen and second and so on. Um, and it looks it it checks. Does this one have an update function attached, or does it, um, or is it? Uh, a part of, 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 of one of the objects that are currently being animated. And until the point where it first answers this question with yes, all of the objects are just painted statically onto the background. That's how it how it does it. As soon as it finds the first object that is that is animated or updated, um, all of the objects, including this one and above, are considered to be moving, even if they are static throughout. But they need to be repainted because if... if um, Otherwise, otherwise, uh, if, if we just actually rendered all of the, the static ones don't move as static, then, then whenever you um, animated something moving, it would uh, pop into the foreground and, and, and wouldn't necessarily you know, go behind something that's, that's actually in the foreground. <laughs> Which is a little bit weird, but it is how it is. But that's, that's how it works. That's, that's essentially how it works. And I'm not sure I want to say a lot more about this. Uh, see the implementation of what's the method? Math scene get moving objects for more details. I think I don't want to say more uh, except for this. So we have the two steps. I think I don't need to make this a, a itemized list actually. I think we can we can make this into two paragraphs and then have this little note block here to make sure that in case there's someone who's interested in more details, they can check that out as well. Is there do we need do we need I'm not sure if we need a new line here. Usually you do. I'll put one and then we'll see what it complains. It complains about meth, which is interesting because there's no meth in this line, but well. Ah, probably it recognizes this as a block and that's why it complains up there. Good, 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 good. Okay. And then what? At that point, we know what? We have not actually written any output yet. That's important. I should say that. Uh, the get moving and static. Where is it called? Here it is called. So that was the begin animations thing, which means we are back in the render. This line has been run. So after this line, it knows where the which ones are the static, which ones are the moving objects, and then it can act accordingly. And it does so. It does so by first saving a static image, and that's the that's the part where actually writing information from Manim's scene onto an image happens. So that's the first time we actually render something. Up to here, up to up to this very moment, everything was just pre-processing and preparations and opening up things and making sure everything is 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 initialized correctly and now actually producing frames happens so this is the moment where i which i consider to to be the first step in the render loop which actually produces the output so we did that great let's write one more sentence here these were the last steps uh, required To prepare for entering the rendering loop, uh, for, to prepare for entering the render loop. No, wait. I want the, the thing I wanted to point out was not that that uh, we entered the render loop. Now the thing that I wanted to point out was up to here we did not render anything yet. Up to this very point, we did not actually write any 
output from Manims from the scene yet. This is about to change. Um, wait, I should say something about the toy example as well. All of what we described here, all of that basically just happens for the toy example. Wait. What's our toy example? In, that's initialization, that's initialization. Wait, I can actually look that up in the rendered version. It's nicer. So this is our toy example. Um, let's check. We have this part here, so the initialization of the orange square and the blue circle, which is discussed in like this chapter here. Plus the addition of the orange square to the scene, which is in this subsection here. Then we discuss this part here, so getting the, the um, animation object. And now we are in the play car. So all of the things that I've just described uh, in a generic and in, in this generic setting also happen for our concrete toy example, but nothing exciting happens there. Um, it we we do use the caching system. We have not produced a, a, a corresponding frame before, so we do need to render. So we are actually we, we basically skip all of the the, the weird uh, side things and we just head into it. I should say I should say what happens here. I should say the orange square is not added to the scene again because it already is part of the scene. The blue circle is not the object that's bound to the animation, so it's not yet added to the scene. And yeah, that's 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 all of the things that I should say right now. Or does the replacement transform does do anything relevant? That's, that might be the part where I should get out the debugger and, and check that actually things are as I say they are. Um, let me let me quickly uh, check class transform transform from copy no, no 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 transform there we go. What happens if the replace thing is true? Ah, that's that the, the change happens in cleanup room scene. Good one. Okay. So, okay, okay. okay. So yeah, okay. The the thing that happens for the toy example. We did not write any so okay, okay. One sentence, we did not write any output yet. Uh one paragraph, what happened to the toy example and, and in, in terms of all the things that we that we just added, and then we actually go into the render loop and, and work through how writing output works. And that might happen in the next stream because I'm not sure I wanna continue here much longer. Up to this very point we did not actually write any output from the scene yet. Um, we did not render any partial image or movie from the scene yet. This is, however, about to change. In the next step, This is however about to change. Before we uh, enter the render loop, let us briefly revisit our toy example and discuss uh, what happens and discuss how the generic um, 
class uh, c no not class method method scene dot play car setup looks like there okay i think this is understandable i'm just going to assume it is <laughs> Um, so what happens? Let's read what I wrote. Uh, let me render the thing. Tskip manim. Then we can look at the rendered output and then we can go point by point what happened for the what happens for our concrete toy example. Come on, hop up. Faster. Why did it re-render the change log stuff? It's weird. We ignore the error. We ignore the error. If we manage to have all this, I think maybe if I sit down one more stream or so and then we have the render loop documented and then finally <laughs> someone can review this. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask people whether they can maybe take a look at this. Maybe, maybe I'll actually also send it to Grant. He might also be interested in, in reading a little bit about this. He's probably the best to judge whether this is understandable. I should have maybe done it for the open. Nah, but I think we can do it, we can do a separate version for the OpenGL renderer. But I need to learn more about how shaders work and stuff before I can actually do that. Why is it taking so why is it actually rewriting all of the, the, the manual right now? It's not that's not what I intended to do. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Reload. Okay, we are finally there. Let's walk through the code. Let's run and scene place card. Increased it a little bit. Okay, um, scene plays called. There are no sub captions, so that is skipped. Inside render a play. It checks whether I should skip the rendering of the current play call. It should not. Okay, let's let's write that down. Let's start writing. Um, in our example, for our replacement transform for the car that should play the placement transform in there is wait not that should play for the call that plays plays the replacement transform there is no sub caption um, to be taken care of so this step is skipped and we immediately hop into uh, the play car, the hop into method Cairo render a play, hop into block. From there. Yo, yo, Sichonet, how are you doing? I'm fine. 
thanks for asking. Just doing a little bit of Manim and yeah. Then I, it's kind of late already, so maybe I, I'll stop afterwards. This is like the last or second to last paragraph that I'm writing, just summing up a little bit. Just summing up a little bit and then leaving spamming chat with the link to the to the rendered preview. <laughs> um, okay, we're in here. Uh, it should not skip from there as the library 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 Rari should not skip rendering. Um, as the library should not skip rendering the animation, and there is also no cached. Um, output yet uh, wait i'm wrong the skipping status is updated blah 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 that's irrelevant the render asks the scene to process the animation in the play call so it just determines there is no subcription to be taken care of. What does oh I have to check. I thought this would be I would be smoother here. Sorry chat. Um no 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 I need to ask the Compile animation data. Wait, the render should. I'm so confused right now. There we go. It first compiles the animation data. It's fine. The renderer then asks the scene. To compile the animation data, there are no ex no extra data. The past argument already is an animation. No post processing needed. Needed. And uh, post processing is a bad word in this context. No uh, additional reparations needed. Um, what else does it check? Processes or keyword arguments. There are no keyword arguments to be processed. No. Um, the renderer didn't ask the scene to compile animation data. The past argument already is an animation. Uh, there is no need for processing any keyword arguments as we did not specify any additional ones to play it adds all objects to which the animations are bound blah 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 could you hear everything great right on my end too? That's very nice. How was your exam? You had one recently, right? Something with circuits, elect 
electronics network. I can't remember. Sorry. <laughs> yes, we did not specify any additional ones to play. What did I just say? Like runtime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not here. It adds all objects to which the animations up there, yeah, right? The object bound to the animation, orange square, is already added, is already part of the scene. So again, no action required, no action taken. Uh, it's not a wait animation, so it doesn't need to do anything. And finally, determines the runtime of the play call. And finally, finally, the runtime is extracted, which is in our case, we specified some. We specified a custom runtime. If I don't. Three seconds. Um, S three seconds long. Extracted three seconds long, and stored in where's the in which attribute? Do I say that? Or would Using. Jeez, this is so long. Who will who will read this? In the duration attribute of the scene. In scene dot duration. Uh, okay, so we have the duration. It should not skip rendering. The renderer should not skip rendering. As the renderer should not skip rendering. And as there is no cached data yet. The renderer then checks whether it should skip, it should not. Then whether the animation is already cached, it is not. And finally, then the animation is begin. <laughs> Should I write that? <laughs> Wait, does that work with backslash? Really? I don't think that works. <laughs> Do you think if I put that, would someone would someone copy edit that and remove it again? And the exam was good. He literally asked only questions from older exams, but uh, the second exam I had on that day was complete BS. <laughs> well, one of two sounds good. That sounds good.
animation is speaking. <laughs> Yo, to the English speaking people in chat. <laughs> How much are you bothered by this? No, I should I should change it. <laughs> wait, wait, where's the why is the formatting so weird now? Where's the margin? Weird. Then the animation is begin. <laughs> no, we don't do that. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. The scene then begins. The animation and for the transform, nothing special happens for that, right? Animation begin, it copies. Wait, what's that? Fate transform. No, 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 no. We want to know fate transform pieces. No, 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 no. That's the transform begin. Uh, target object, target copy. Let's make this a new paragraph. I, I thought I, I would write all of this in one paragraph, but it, it's getting too long. Uh, the scene then begins the animation. In the case of for the class replacement transform. This means that the animation creates Cop creates, populates, all of its relevant attributes, all of its relevant animation attributes, that is, um, a copy of the starting and the target object so that it can safely interpolate between the two and it makes sure that said copies are compatible I don't say that. I don't say that. That's too that's too technical already. It that animation that populates all of its relevant animation attributes and make. I'll I'll say something along. Wait, I'll say something a little bit weaker so that that if someone is is really interested, they can look into it themselves. Um, it means the animation populates all of its relevant animation attributes. That is. A copy, I'll say not a copy, I'll say compatible copies. Compatible copies of the starting and the target object so that it can safely interpolate between two. That's even, that, that makes, that improved the sentence, I think. That improved the sentence. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? It started the thing. And it doesn't need to do anything else. The 
does anything else happen afterwards? Ah yeah, the, 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 this mechanism here. So this happened, we're fine with that, and then this happens. Uh, get moving and starting static objects. So that can safely interpolate between the two. Um, the mechanism determining static and moving objects finds that out of all of the scenes objects which currently only involves only consists of the orange square The mechanism in determining static and moving objects iterates or considers all of the scenes objects. Currently, this only consists of the orange square and determines that the orange square is bound to an animation that is currently played and thus classifies it as a moving object. The mechanism determining static and moving objects considers all of the scenes objects. Currently, this is currently this only consists of the orange square and determines that the orange square is bound to an animation that is currently played. Full stop. That's also the sentence is not not a good one. That's not a good sentence. But it, I mean, maybe maybe we can iterate later at some point. Maybe. Um, uh, as a result, the square is classified as a moving object and repainted every. No, that's later. That's later. Okay, good. The mechanism determining static and moving objects considers all of the scenes objects. Currently, this only consists of the orange square. Currently, only the orange square. And determines that the orange square is bound to an animation that is currently playing. At this point, only the orange square and determines that the orange square is bound to the animation that is currently playing. Okay, I think I've removed the 17 instances of currently from the sentence. And there's only one now. The mechanism determining static and moving objects considers all of the scenes objects. At this point, only the orange square and determines that the orange square is bound to an animation that is currently played. As a result, the square is classified as a moving object. Good. And now we render images. Time to render some frames. And with that, I think I'm done for today. <laughs> I don't want to anymore. That was good. That was also much longer than I expected. Let's give this a spin. I'll render this particular segment once more. Maybe we read through it once more and, and, and... Well, if there are very bad offenders of, of word repetitions, then we maybe fix them. And otherwise, we are happy. 
write the thing. Go, go, go. There we go. Okay. So here's the thing. So much progress. Yeah, I'm really happy about it, actually. I'm really happy. Animations in the render loop. Blah, 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 blah. What did you write today? I think we started here. In the event that the animations has to be rendered, the renderer asks its scene file writer to start a writing process. This process is started by a call to FFmpeg and opens a pipe to which rendered draw frames can be written. As long as the pipe is open, the process can be accessed via the writing process attribute of the file writer. With the writing process in place, the renderer then asks the scene to begin the animations. It does so by doing the it, it does so by doing the following two things. That's kind of it does so by it does so via the following two I don't like I don't like these one sentence paragraphs. Let's move that up with the writing process in place in place to render then asks the scene to begin the animations. Full stop. And I think that's enough. First it literally begins all of the animations. That's better. I like it. First it literally begins all of the animations by calling the super uh, setup methods. Animation setup scene animation.begin. As a consequence, the objects that are newly introduced by an animation, like via create, etc., are added to the scene. Furthermore, the animation suspends. As a consequence, is not good. Um, in doing so, the objects that are newly introduced, blah blah blah. Furthermore, the animations, the animation suspends update the functions being called on this object and it sets its object to the state to the state that to the state and it sets its object to the state that corresponds to the first frame of the animation after this has happened, for all animations in the current play call, the Cairo renderer determines which of the scene's objects can be painted statically through the background and which ones have to be redrawn every frame. It does so by calling whoop, and the resulting partition of objects is stored in the corresponding moving objects and static objects attributes. Note, the mechanism that determines static moving objects is specific for the Cairo renderer. The OpenGL renderer works differently. Basically, moving objects are determined by checking whether they or any of their children, or any of them, or any of them objects below them in the sense of the order in which objects are processed in the scene, either have an update function attached, or whether they appear in one of the current animations. Well, it's kind of clunky that sentence, but I'll take it. See the implementation of scene get moving objects for more details. Someone will need. Uh, we, th we will need to copy it at some point. Up to this very point, we did not actually render any partial image or movies, image or movie files. Image or movie files from the scene yet. This is, however, about to change. Before we enter the render loop, let us briefly revisit our toy example and discuss how the generic scene placed car setup looks like there. For a call that plays the blob, there is no subcaption to be taken care of. The renderer then asks the scene to compile the animation data. The past argument already is an animation, no additional preparation needed. There is no need for processing any keyword arguments, as we did not specify any additional ones to play. The object bound to the animation orange square is already part of the scene, so again, no action taken. Finally, the runtime is extracted, it's three seconds long. I don't need to. I think the S is too much, kind of breaks the flow. Three seconds long and stored in scene duration. The renderer then checks whether it should skip, it should not, then whether the animation is already cached, it is not. The scene then begins the animation for the replacement transform. 
Why is this not rendered correctly? Uh, uh, uh. Ah, because I... Ah, uh, class. But... Because I didn't write it as a reference. Uh, the scene then begins under animation. For the replacement transform, this means that the animation populates all of its relevant animation attributes. That is, compatible copies of the starting and target object so that they can safely interpolate it. So that it can safely interpolate between the two. The mechanism determining static and moving objects considers all of the scene's objects as this point, at this point only the ordered square and determines the ordered square is bound to an animation that is currently played. As a result, the square is classified as a moving object. Time to render some frames. I mean, it's a bit clunky here and there, but uh, I think it's okay. Better than nothing. Let's commit and be done for today. Yo, chat, I have something funny I can show you. I did some fun stuff recently. I think I've, I might have shown this already, so maybe maybe it's not that exciting. Um, everything up to rendering the first frame. Actually rendering an image. The first frame. I'm currently doing the opposite of that. What's the opposite of that? Not fun stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like compiler construction. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear. Actually not. <laughs> or not compiler construction. Then it's much better. Um, Let's pull. Compiler construction is a breeze. I think I've never seen these words typed in, in, in that sequence. <laughs> And we push. Trying to read papers. Oh, I do that too sometimes. <laughs> but neurosymbolic program synthesis. I know all of these words separately. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Uh, this is this is kind of normal. It takes a while until you really get into like one of these things it's i think it's it's sort of a normal experience when reading papers if that if that provides any form of comfort so that's our thing Oh no, I did not want to go back. That's where I want to go. Okay. It's rendering. Perhaps it's even passing pre-commit, but I would doubt... Oh, I actually did not. I think I miss so much pre-knowledge. As I said, this is this is really quite a universal experience, I I would say. New update, more content. Um, there is a readable overview now, and the. Third chapter, animations and the render loop on animations and the render loop um, contains all of the content up to 
um, and not including yet um, rendering rendering the first frame. So all of the preparation stuff is now done. All of the content contains everything. Up to not including, including rendering the first frame. Okay, good. We did something. So for reference, for reference chat, I'll post, I'll leave this again here in case anyone wants to take a look at what we, what we've just produced. Uh, that's the thing. And this is the copy in a few minutes here will be the rendered version of this. Uh, I'm not even nearly fluent in German, but I'm trying to read, uh, translate a math paper written in German from 1980. It's going horribly. <laughs> I think I, if I had to read a math paper from 1980, yeah, it depends on the subject. Some of them are actually written rather clearly. But yeah, I, I, I feel the pain, question mark. <laughs> in case I can help with anything, let me know. I know some German. Or at least I pretend to. All right. It's titled Gleichverteilung und Quadratwurzelschnecke. Cool. I tried with a physics paper from 1930s. It was too hard. 1930, I imagine, is probably a little bit harder. Quadratwurzelschnecke. <laughs> My new favorite word. Wurzelschnecke. There's an actual article about that. Now I need to click it. Die Wurzelschnecke, Wurzelspirale der Sp Spirale des Theodorus. Eine Spirale von rechtwinkligen Dreiecken mit Seitenlänge 1, Wurzel n und Wurzel n plus 1. Ah, I know that one. That's fun. The paper proves that the rays you see in the Wurzelschnecke are uniformly distributed. Interesting. Very interesting. They never intersect. I mean, not intersect. Coincide? Maybe coincide is a little bit better, but yeah. The diagonals. Sedge. Quadratwurzel. Nach Renditen Reihenfolge Risiko. Yeah, that's a good one as well. That's a good one as well. All right. Yeah, it's past midnight already. I should go and well, there's something else I want to do before I go to sleep, so I, I should probably get going. Um, yeah, tonight was fun. We made some progress again. Very good. If 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 you really need some some help with translating, you can feel free to, to DM me. Maybe I can help with a few words here and there. In case, in case you need help. But I imagine that it might not be the easiest literature to, to, to work through. Might have to take on that? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. No worries. No worries. Service for subscribers. <laughs> 
I'll add that in my in my Patreon should I ever create one. <laughs> All right, I should probably not do that. It sounds silly. Anyhow, chat. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, your OnlyFans. <laughs> right. All the spicy math content happens there. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Math OnlyFans. <laughs> We will see. I'll think about it. <laughs> Yo, um, that was good work. I'm really looking forward to removing more of these open points, and at some point will be done, and then I'll be very, very happy. Then I'll be very, very happy once that happens. Um, actually, I think I will be happy once it is merged. Then I will be more happy. <laughs> Until then, it, it might still take a little while, but I I hope I hope it won't take. Uh, I hope that the next release that we do will have this included already, because I think it 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 would be worth it to to finish this and then make people aware that this exists and maybe get some new people to help with stuff. Anyhow, uh, thanks for hanging out tonight, chat. That was was very chill as usual. Um, hope to see you guys again soon. I am perhaps online again tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. As I've said, I'm, I'm currently also playing a lot of Path of Exile and... The thing is that I can't really stream that because my my laptop is too weak. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll be I'll be online regardless. Uh, have a good night, everyone, and see you guys soon again.